What's going on, everybody? It's time for another episode of the Binge Boys podcast. I'm your host, Logan, joined by Tanner and Matt. What up, gents? How's it going? Hi. We out here. We, uh, we're we doing it. We're, we're doing it. This is, uh, is going to be a loaded epi of the Binge Boys podcast. Probably one of the most loaded epis we've ever done. Um, just a lot of good stuff happened in the last week. So I'm going to just get right into the programming notes. Um, if this is your first time uh, listening to the Binge Boys, welcome. If it is not your first time, welcome back premises of our show here is that we break down the hottest in tv and film every week as well as some music video games pop culture here and there uh but uh, for the most part we're a tv and film podcast every thursday we have a bonus episode of the show entitled the run through on those episodes i'm joined by tanner and matt megan and emily or anyone who wants to dive in on a different movie or tv series break it down element by element and give it an in-depth review First things first to support us, go to Instagram and follow us at binge boys podcast. That's where you get the announcements, the top five list, the reviews and more next thing. Go to iTunes and make sure you've left that five star rating as well as a short review helps us out a lot. And then finally, I just want you to tell a friend that is all I need from you. Um, quickly, Tanner, would you, uh, would you get into the, uh, this weekend work, work, work and work. That's it. <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah, I actually, I had a fantasy draft yesterday, and I got my boy Aaron Rodgers. So Ooh. we're good. We'll okay. be good for the year now. <laughs> okay. That's Matt, it. what did you dive into over the weekend? You usually say your uh, weekends were a movie. This weekend was a home improvement show. Oh, I uh, had the parents down. They helped me figure out what the what the heck to do with all the all the plants I got around this darn house. So okay, did that, and then uh, I also did a fantasy draft. I'm gonna break down them break them down pick by pick um nah just kidding but i did get my my boy jonathan taylor went from my wisconsin badgers to my indianapolis colts so just really one team to another just keep him keep him in the network yeah, yeah. how about that yeah man what about you logan how's your weekend it was pretty solid me and the gf or the fiance i i should say um I should say i'm that. gonna I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sleep on the couch now from uh, from saying that one. That one? Uh, we, we drove down to uh, Destin, Florida for the weekend, did a quick in and out uh, beach trip. It was my mom's 50th birthday over the weekend. And um, my dad surprised her with a little trip down to Florida. And then me and Catherine surprised her uh, coming in the next day. And we just did, you know, beach things and shopped around got a little trinket a little souvenir here and there Hell we're taking yeah. a page out of the uh, will to freeze book of everywhere we travel together we get a christmas ornament or a fridge magnet that's good we do fridge magnets i love that okay cool so what we've done so far like repeat places like we've done like the first time we'll go to a place like for example like this is the first time we went to the beach together so we got an ornament however next time we go we'll get a fridge magnet there you go. And then same thing like this weekend, we're going to go to Nashville to visit her parents and we we've already gotten our ornament from there. So we'll probably get a fridge magnet. Hell yeah. So um, taking the page out of those books. I love that. Um, so yeah, that's, that's all we really, uh, that's all we really did. Got back yesterday, watched a movie and uh, just have been freaking out over the entertainment week we've got. But before we talk about those events, Uh, It's 2021. Everybody's on their hotness and fitness journey. And one of the biggest aspects of that lifestyle is eating healthy and meal prepping. Most people have no idea where to start and they're overwhelmed by options and they don't know what meals suit them best for the goals they want to achieve. Luckily, Prepped and Ready has that solution. Prepped and Ready Meals delivers high quality, fresh meals with health and fitness in mind with a variety of healthy, low calorie, but delicious meals. They can cater to anybody's needs and goals. If you live in the greater Atlanta area and you're interested in meal prep made simple, you can go to preppedreadymeals.com and use the code binge15 at checkout for 15% off your first time order. Binge15, B-I-N-G-E, 1-5 for 15% off that first time order. Also want to do a quick disclaimer to you, Matt, and maybe the people listening 
at home. Tanner and I are currently getting hit by the uh, remnants of the uh, the uh, Hurricane Ida, Ooh. which is uh, one of the uh, reasons that we dipped out of Florida so fast yesterday. Sure. Um, shouts to all of our New Orleans people. They're getting hit again. It uh, seems like they, they can just never win. No. Let's let's take a page out of Patrick Starr's book and why don't we just take New Orleans and push it somewhere else? <laughs> Can we just take the whole city and push it somewhere else? Um, I don't know if they've simply tried that. I, I don't I don't know if it's logistically possible either. <laughs> um, so shouts shouts to all those people. Hopefully they got out of there and, and stayed dry. I know a lot of people evac'd and and got the hell out of there. Um, Drew Brees is sleeping in Atlanta Stadium right now. Oh, and his family. Uh, is he in the Kanye suite? <laughs> I think I think yeah, I think they're neighbors. <laughs> does uh does every stadium now have a Kanye suite? Sure. I think so. They want to make any money. <laughs> yeah, for <laughs> real. If uh, uh yeah, that that sounds like a cash cow to me. Um couple headlines here, nothing crazy, kind of just quick little notes. So last week I made mention of a um of an event that is or maybe it was two weeks ago i made mention of an event oh yeah two weeks ago i mentioned that disney is having a, a disney plus event november 12th but uh via tiktok and twitter last night i discovered that there are several other events that are taking place this year that's going to give us insight on uh, some of our favorite entertainment stuff. So I just wanted to quickly run through the fact that Netflix is having its first ever global fan event on September 25th called Tadum, which is supposedly supposed to be the Tadum. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, it says that Tadum is the first ever Netflix global fan event. On September 25th, our biggest stars and creators from around the world representing over 70 series, films, and specials will join a virtual stage to announce exclusives and first looks. So it'll be on Netflix and on Netflix's YouTube channels, um, you know, depending on your time zone at 9 a.m. PST, 12 p.m. EST, and 4 p.m. GMT, 1 a.m. JST, and KST. Um, it says over... 70 films and series will be discussed throughout the three-hour event, most of which including our most popular shows, uh, such as Stranger Things, Bridgerton, The Witcher, Cobra Kai, oh. as well as more blockbuster films and comedy specials. So, all right, uh, we will be on the lookout for maybe some big-time announcements. Hot, huge rumor is that they'll drop a Stranger Things season four trailer during that event, which would you know blow the roof off. So, so we've got our event in September, which is the Netflix event. Yep. October, we've got the return of DC's fandom, which oh. is where they announced a handful of DC projects last year, and that's where they gave us the first trailer for the Batman. Mm -hmm. um, I'm assuming another one, please. another trailer, maybe for the Batman. Uh, speaking of the Batman, I didn't have this written down, but I saw this, this on Twitter. This previous weekend, they did their first ever screening for the Batman to test audiences. And uh, they they said that there has been nothing but good thoughts for the movie yes. that is almost three hours long. Whoa. So uh, maybe that's just the rough cut, you know, but um, I, I, don't we'll see. Mind. I don't mind. We'll see. So global DC fan event is... October 16th of this year. And you'll be able to stream it on YouTube and on DC's fandom uh, website like you were last year. And then finally, to recap, just like I announced a couple weeks ago, Disney Day is November 12th, where they will announce a handful of Star Wars and Marvel and uh, other trailers and information about Disney Plus shows going forward. But I talked about that a couple weeks ago. So... Um, Netflix, DC, and Disney all doing events each once a month for the next three months. You'll love to see it. So, I do. Um, like, yeah, sounds, sounds awesome. like there's a lot of content coming. Love to hear it. <laughs> and then speaking of the last event, uh, which is its own other news piece, this last week it was GamesCon, uh, it, which is a 
pretty big, not as big as E3, but a pretty big uh, games conference that they have each uh, year. And I was just going to kind of run through the big ticket announcements that they announced, which included a lot of release dates and stuff. So sure. real quick, Halo Infinite, we finally got a release date for that, which is December 8th, just in time for Christmas. Uh, so um, another interesting note about Halo, though, uh, a new trailer was released. However, multiplayer is going to be available at launch, but co-op and campaign and forge won't be available on launch day. They said they wanted to get it out for launch day 2021 or holiday. I'm sorry, 2021. So campaign and co- forge will come out weeks after what? The fu- so what are you paying for? Just multiplayer? Essentially, you're playing for multiplayer game. and an unfinished game. What the? F- this what is you- just that's f- yes, whack. yeah. A lot of I saw on Twitter that there were quite a few boos when they heard yeah. uh, that that was the deal. So, um, <laughs> one. and yet there's one more. There's another. <laughs> There you go. So, what the uh, hell? and they also announced a uh, companion special edition Xbox Series X and controller that will run you 479 euros. And but it doesn't never- come with like a disc player and like the controller has no buttons or anything. Those will hit holiday <laughs> season. <laughs> That's good. They come out you later. It. It's DLC. Yeah, yeah DLC. <laughs> Yeah, but, um, next I mean, up, you'll never get that Xbox because I guess you can't even get a regular one, anyways. Yeah, for <laughs> real. Yeah, <laughs> just in case you wanted a it's regular so one, dumb. now you're going to try to get a special edition, a Halo yeah. version that's also going to be unavailable forever. Yeah, that's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Call of Duty Vanguard. We talked a little bit about it last week, but they showed off ten minutes of uninterrupted gameplay from the campaign mode um, and more details about the beta. The game will launch November fifth. That looks good. Horizon Forbidden West, which is the sequel to Horizon Zero Dawn, which is an awesome PlayStation exclusive if you haven't played it. Um, They announced the release date for the game, which is February 22nd, 2021. Um, So we're super excited about that. Pre-order started September 2nd. Um, And that's, yeah, that's that's that. Um, A new game was uh, announced called Midnight Suns. Yep. Yep. Which is a uh, R- Marvel RPG game uh, giving players the ability to create and customize their own superhero. The cast of characters you play alongside of Iron Man, Wolverine, Blade, Ghost Rider, and more. Uh, seems to be a very fun game. Gameplay dra- trailer dropped as well as the game will be released in March of 22. So that'll be fun. Um, this is the one that's the one that's like XCOM style, right? Correct. Yeah. Love yes. that game. So I'm yes. very, very excited. Yeah, that'll be a really good. I can't wait to see some more gameplay footage. Right. You have to um, mention there's gotta be and there's you have to mention the one other game. Lego Star Wars. Oh. I, I'm not done, Tanner. <laughs> I'm sorry. You said you look like you were <laughs> Saint uh Saints Row is uh getting a reboot live action. Uh, open world game or sorry live action I meant open world game uh, is coming out early next year and is just called Saints Row um, it will be available on all platforms ex- previous generation and current the game will launch February 25th so the same week as uh, Horizon comes Saints Row the reboot a lot of people are upset about this Saints Row reboot I saw on Twitter that People are bashing the art style and the animation. Like people are not happy with this Saints Row reboot. Yeah, I mean, I feel like they. Do you play any of those games? Just any of the old Saints Rows? Mm-hmm. I, I've I've played, you know, the right. older ones here and there, but I never religiously played them like I would like a Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, I played the one where you were like trapped in a video game and you basically turned into like a superhero. So uh, like. Yeah. I understand why they're rebooting because, like, after you basically become a god in the world, there you there's really nowhere to go but up. So, yeah, for real. Um, and then finally, uh, or not finally, uh, Tanner made mention already, but Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga 
uh, is getting um, released in spring of 22, uh, which sucks because the game was supposed to come out a couple months after uh, the last Skywalker. What the last? What was it called? The last movie? The last Skywalker? Rise, the Rise of Skywalker. Skywalker. Yep. That's it. You, you were getting um, there. I'm thinking of the last Jedi. Yeah. Uh, the the uh, the Rise of Skywalker it was supposed to release like two months after that, but it kept getting delayed. And finally, it'll release next time next spring. They dropped another new trailer for it, but with no release date at the end of it. Uh, just saying, spring 2022, which gives them any time from March to like May. Yep. So that's Let's pretty much. It the major major releases a bunch of other indie games got dates and demos and and all of that but those are just some of the big mainstream high ticket items personally i'm i'm pretty excited for uh for horizon and um i mean obviously cod i don't have hey i don't have xbox so i won't be touching halo thank god um, but the midnight suns anymore. will be cool and i'm also <laughs> looking forward to um damn far cry uh, that's got the dude from Breaking Bad in it. Uh, yeah, Juan Carlo, Giancarlo. Yeah, yeah, for real. So I think uh, you know this next season of gaming will be fun. It's just a matter of time when it gets here. Yep. So um, those are trying to rush through our headlines there a little bit, but nothing major happened. Just some cool announcements. We've got stuff to talk about, and the one thing I know you're looking for us to really talk about, we're we're gonna talk about that last. Uh, because we want to save as much time as possible for it. So let's start with a movie that released uh, last week on HBO Max called, and in theaters, called Reminiscence. Now, Reminiscence is directed and written by Lisa Joy, stars Hugh Jackman and Rebecca Ferguson, and it is about Nick Bannister, who is a private investigator of the mind, navigates the alluring world of the past when his life is changed by his new client, May. A simple case becomes an obsession after she disappears and he fights to learn the truth about her movie was released again in theaters and on HBO max with their little, you know, dual theater deal, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I, uh, I, I personally wasn't super duper looking forward to this one. It was one of those trailers that, Honestly, whenever I was in the movie theater and the trailer came on and I had to go to the bathroom, I'd be like, oh, I'm going to go to the bathroom during this trailer because um, I just wasn't very interested. Um, you know, Hugh Jackman's great and all, and but I just, you know, I just wasn't jumping up and down about this one. And uh, after watching the movie, I think I gave it a three out of five. I think it was just fine. It was it was cool. Like a lot of the elements, I think, worked, um, but it just wasn't personally something that I would watch again or jump up and down about. Like yeah. we, we got back from Florida yesterday around five 30 and we turned it on just to kind of unpack, do laundry, you know, the, the typical like chores you do when you get home from a trip and we had it on in the background and it kind of caught our attention. We like, we, yeah. we did sit back for a second and watch the movie. Uh, but other than that, like I haven't really thought about it. I haven't really you know, whatever the cast mm -hmm. did pretty cool. I think Hugh Jackman did awesome. Yeah. Um, and so did Rebecca Ferguson. So uh, yeah, M Matt, <laughs> what do you think about reminiscence? Yeah. Sort of a similar, um, a lot of similar thoughts. Thought it was a perfectly fine movie. Um, watched it while just kind of doing some other Sunday um, stuff, but I thought it was a really sort of interesting um not like homage, that's not really the right word, but it was just, it was a really, it was surprisingly just kind of a classic like film noir, like the, you know, hard grizzled detective meets like a mysterious woman, a mysterious woman who kind of like, you know, caused him to do that. So I thought that was really interesting. Like, I really like the cast. I really like the, the setting, like Same. the set design and stuff, but like, it just wasn't like, basically everything about this movie is really good except kind of like the execution i yeah. feel like just the just the script didn't like pop when it was uh delivered but like no one was just like putting in like a bad performance or anything so that's yeah just kind of not quite nailing the execution i would say and yeah it's just sort of a little bit hard not like hard to follow but i felt like 
Um, it was sort of trying to be overcomplicated for its own sake at times um, and not really with a good reason. So that's kind of what put it down to a two or three out of five for myself as well. Tanner, I thought you were saying you were a little bit higher on it, maybe close yeah, to a four. I gave, I gave it, yeah, I got it. Well, if I, you know, I'd say if there were 0.5s, it'd be 3.5, but it's, but there isn't. So I gave it a four. I like, uh, I like Hugh. It was weird seeing him not being, not have claws come out of his fingers, but, um, well, kind of with the needle thing that he was always freaking poking people with, but he, um, I was pretty interested. I right from the beginning, I was like, I don't know what this is gonna be like. Like, I don't have any. I, I don't really care too much to watch. Like, but and then I I started watching. I was like, okay, I'm interested. Uh, at a couple points, I was like, what the, f-? you know? And that's what I like to get out of movies like this. So, gave me what I wanted. Some confusion and hard to follow and time travel shit. So and the water, like that was interesting. That was so cool. Seeing a whole city half underwater, that was so creepy. Well, that that also, they didn't really kind of, they kind Explain. of just like assumed you're going to like not ask questions. But yeah. I looked at Catherine like halfway through the movie and I was like, wait a minute. That they're underwater. Did I missed something, but why is the whole city underwater? And she was yeah. like, I think they're trying to like convey that global warming did that. Like that they were trying to think that like they're just trying to make a movie that takes place in the future. And realistically, if the movie took place in the future, oh. like maybe the movie like over flooded the, or the water over flooded the earth, which I mean, global warming. Yeah, it sucks, but like it was kind of badass. Like they would travel between like different like cities by boat and shit. Like it was kind of tight, but yeah. I mean, I, I would get that if you're living in that situation, it probably might not be the, the tightest also it doesn't help that one of the main locations was actually uh new orleans yeah the oh, whole like miami new yeah. Orleans. Uh, yeah not not a great uh not a great deal there not good they, want that, they want that timing back that's that's for sure <laughs> yeah new orleans taking the l's <laughs> but it, i mean i, it, I mean and it, it's funny because like it, we are like the whole world already kind of like industrialized it almost not industrialized it, but like they made a place called the sunken cove. Like, yep. like, like it's exactly what would happen. We would <laughs> well, create stuff like, out of it. This is what they were saying just about like how like one guy swept in and bought up basically all the, you know, lower elevation buildings and was just kind of a slumlord with it. And then all the rich people had like the, the highlands to make their own like massive estates. I'm like, See, it's like the things around this movie are more interesting. interesting than yes. like what they focused on. Like, I agree. I'd like to, I'd like to see a prequel that has nothing to do with Hugh Jackman's yeah, character. Yeah, how all this <laughs> shit happened. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's a very interesting world that they lived in. I think. Yeah, I mean, I, there wasn't really anything. Kind of like what Matt said, and kind of a combination of what Tanner said. There wasn't anything that I hated about this movie. Yeah, I just didn't love it. Like. It caught, it held my attention for the two hours that it was on, but after it ended, I was like, okay, now I'm going to go do other things, and I haven't thought about the movie since. Yeah. Um, there was like, there was just a cup. It was just kind of, it was just kind of there. It was just a, it was almost just like a filler movie. Like, yeah, we we didn't have any major releases, and this movie <laughs> came out, so we watched it, and I don't feel any type of way about it. But I also wasn't excited to see it, so maybe that like yeah, that does it weighs down my motivation anyway. But I, I think Hugh Jackman killed it. Like Hugh he Jackman did. always acts very well in his movies. Like there was a couple scenes where I was like, "Damn, Hugh Jackman's a good actor. He needs very. to be appreciated more." Um, but other than that, I think we all agree that it was you know it was, it was fun. But yeah. I'm I'm not gonna say if someone's like, "Hey, how." How about that? Here, let's let's role play this, Matt. Hey, sure. Matt, you guys, you guys watched that uh, that reminiscence movie. What what do you think? Should I watch it? Um, I mean, if there's l- pretty much nothing else you're interested in, and you like time travel slash uh, sort uh, pseudo time travel, I don't know. <laughs> However, you I don't want even to know. This. It's not like I, I, I don't really know. It wasn't even like memory time travel. Yeah, which Cognitive kind of a cool concept. Travel. Really cool concept. I feel it like is. I've, sort of seen it in like tv shows and like other stuff though it, it almost gave me a, assassin's creed vibes a little oh. yes big animus energy yes very much so <laughs> animus energy and i was thinking um 
I really enjoyed like how every single time he, you know, he had somebody in a trance, he read them the sh- the same spiel, and I was like, oh, they, okay, so this is he's, it's almost like a form of hypnotism. So cool concepts, just meh execution. Mm-hmm. So um, if you want to watch Reminiscence, you can by going to the theaters, or you can check it on on HBO Max. I think whenever they put these out on HBO Max, they leave them out for like a month. About yeah, a month, I think. I think this came out last week, maybe. I don't think it was quite brand new this week. So probably uh, the first um, first week of October or so, the movie will be taken out. But yeah. check it out. Yeah, if, if you don't have anything that left to see or if this week you're not interested in seeing Shang-Chi, then maybe go check out Reminiscence. Yeah, if you're a Jack Jackman completionist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so... Go check the movie out. Three out of five by me and Matt and uh, four out of five ish. Three and a half, four out of five. If, if we did half, I probably would have given it a three and a half. For sure. I, but th- I think, I think, I think we got right that there. half. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But but we don't do halves, so I'm, I'm going to round down for this one. Uh, but anyway, reminiscence. reminiscence. Um, to everybody's surprise, yesterday, the day we're recording this, uh, we got Donda, which... I was going to pose the question, what does Donda mean? But uh, Donda, according to Donda, Wikipedia Donda. here, Donda was the name of Kanye's mom. Yep. When she died in 2007 after botched uh, plastic surgery. Yes. What? I've read the Wikipedia page as well. Yes. <laughs> um, so Donda is the 10th studio album by rapper and producer Kanye West released August 29th, 2021 by Good Music and Def Jam Recordings. The album is named, like I said, after West's late mother, Donda West. The album was initially set for release on July 24th, 2020, but was delayed multiple times. Kanye set up a provisional recording studio at Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta, where listening events were held July 22nd and August 5th. After the third listening event in Soldier Field in Chicago, Donda was released on the 29th, two days later after that. So, Donda has 27 tracks and uh, features are anywhere from uh, Lil Baby to Playboy Cardi to Travis Scott to Chris Brown. Uh, The the list goes on and on and on and on and on. Um, Guys, what, what do we think here? Um, uh, Matt, what, where were your thoughts on Donda? I think you were probably the most excited out of us three for it. Yeah. So I was definitely, I mean, I never really go in with too many expectations, especially after the last few Kanye releases, you know, the gospel album and the, you know, 20 minute little guys he uh, put out before that. And then even before, like even going back to, following up graduation this big like basically arena rock album with 808s and heartbreak was just kind of a huge left turn that uh, a lot of people didn't see coming but this i tried to not um listen to any leaks or anything from like listening parties or whatever i'm just trying to excuse me keep um what i heard as like high level as possible just what people what other things people were comparing it to and very much so sort of in line with um, with 808s and Heartbreak, which I guess if you want to consider this a, a, his breakup album with uh, Kim Kardashian, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, there's pretty much like not pretty like stripped down production on most of it. Typically just like a beat, maybe some organ and then the and then the vocal track. And that's about it for for most of them. Um yeah, there were definitely some some good songs on there, and there's definitely some where where kind of spitting or his features are putting out some good bars. But I just don't think that this is the last version of the album we're gonna see. That's yeah. that's kind of my prediction. I think he's gonna put out like one or two more, like he did with uh, Life of Pablo. So mm-hmm. yeah, overall, I kind of landed at a, at a at a four out of five. I think there were more songs that kept me interested than than I found wanting to skip or were bored with the only ones i really wanted to skip are the ones that were like the part twos that were basically just rehashes of prior songs on the album 
which I thought was another weird move and another reason why I think it's uh, not quite done. So yeah, that's what kind of landed me at the at the four out of five. Tanner, you were a little bit lower. You were you gave it a three, I think three out of five. Yes. Well, I <laughs> I play the first song. The Don the Chant. <laughs> yes, and I'm immediately like, "Are you kidding me?" I'm like, "What the hell?" Dun da dun da. Like, what the hell? But uh, I kept going and um, got about halfway through. Heard Playboy Cardi in a song that was a good one. Uh, Post was in one, wasn't he? He was in the second one, I think. But uh, Post, was, Post was somewhere in there, man. Yeah, but um, I, I was just I don't know. I I kind of lost my excitement for uh, Kanye, but that's just me. But it was all right. The songs that I did hear, they were good. But um, I just couldn't get through the whole thing. I just not really my style. And uh, yeah, uh, so that's why I gave it a three out of five because I listened to half and I liked a, so half of the half that I listened to. So that was uh, a. Yeah, I think I, I think I'll keep going. I, I'm definitely going to keep going, and keep trying because I'm sure there's going to be some hits that are going to come out of this. And yeah. So, uh, but yeah, that's what I give it. But I think he can do. He can do. He can do better than this. Agreed. Agreed. Definitely mm-hmm. agreed. Yeah, for sure. What do you I, think? Uh, I um I land probably more in line with Matt's thoughts. I mean, I I I I share a combination of both of you. Like, part of me was losing interest and losing hype just because I was thinking, oh, this is going to be just like. What was whatever the last album that Kanye put out that took like four months for him to finally release, and I was by the end of it, I was just like, whatever, this thing is mod, like mod at at best, um, or mid, I'm sorry, but <laughs> mod. Uh, <laughs> this, um, I, I I agree with Matt saying that I found myself more interested in most of the songs than disinterested. However, the last let's see one two three four like five or six songs the part twos of each of the like the first six songs i just found were just kind of pointless yeah um i i really really enjoyed the songs the um the ones that were jesus lord they were like eight and eleven minutes long yeah i really enjoyed those um because kanye kind of started spitting on those too um, I liked the song with Don Tolliver and Kid Cudi, Moon. That was um, real. I really like Moon. Um, I really enjoyed. Uh, I I really enjoyed some of the ones that Kanye did alone, the uh, where he was by himself. Those were pretty good when he was just kind of spitting facts. Um, big facts. Big facts. <laughs> um, and I listened to this. Keep in mind, I listened to this also straight through. List driving back from Florida. Two Dang. of my five and a half hour drive was Kanye was West. Donda. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so then you listen to it again, and then you just had an hour of other stuff. <laughs> so, Four so, hours. Yeah, of Kanye. so I just listened to the album twice, and then listened to an hour of something else. Um, you listened to the first half again. <laughs> yeah. I really just wanted to get in. No, I just listened to Donda chant seventeen da, 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 times. Da, 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 da. Um, God, that was Catherine, so weird. <laughs> in, upon turning on the album, Catherine looked at me after the first 10 seconds of the Donda chant, and she was like, Logan, <laughs> enough. Skip it. We get it. And I was like, no, what if something, co- what if something yeah, what comes if- in at the end? Nothing happened. She's like, it's been 15, 20 seconds of this Donda, Donda. Um, but I liked it. It was, yeah. it was enjoyable. There were some good verses on it. I don't know if there's any like standout like smash hits. Not but, as it currently is, I don't think. Nothing really like grabbed me like the first time I heard like power or like other songs like that. Sure. There's no anthems, I guess we yeah. should say. That's super um, anthem. pretty understated, like as a whole, I would say. Yeah, I really did enjoy the the Jay Z verse. I just remembered that the jail oh, yeah, uh, song that right. he had. Jay Z did pretty well, which is weird because I thought like I saw on Twitter that Kanye kicked Jay Z off of the album to put the baby on, but that was just Jail Part Two that he put the baby on. So I, 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 I don't know. 
I thought we were going to get this. One of our headlines this week was going to be the fact that this album was going to release the same day as Certified Lover Boy, which comes out on Friday, Drake's new album. Um, but it looks like Kanye dropped his yesterday and Drake announced the release date for his album today officially um, by tweeting out some like album artwork or something for it. It's just the pregnant emojis, which is just <laughs> it's, it's, okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> hopefully Drake kind of comes in. I know that this hopefully he comes in and snaps. Hopefully there's some good stuff here, um, but you know, we'll have to see. So look at this two really big albums week after week um, and two really big Marvel episodes for us week after week. So we'll have Shang-Chi next week and Drake's album and we'll have, uh, and we had Spider-Man trailer and, uh, uh, and Donda this week. Uh, but yeah, the production was good. The lyric, there wasn't any like cheesy lyrics that I heard from anybody. I don't think. Um, so yeah, I enjoyed it. I give it a four out of five. I, it'll probably be in the rotation for the rest of the year. Maybe make the top 10 list. Um, we'll just have to see. It's got a good shot. Yeah, it's got a definitely a good shot. So do we want to move on to what if? What Perfect. if we did that? We <laughs> could do that. Uh, what the if the third episode? In. Yeah, the watch is going to come in and uh, be the listener and listen to what if we did this. Well, oh, somewhere shit. there's a different universe that we didn't do what if. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, what if uh, Earth lost its mightiest heroes? Can I just say right off the bat, this is my favorite episode so Me far. Me too. Nailed I, it. This one was great. I really enjoyed this one. It was a lot of fun to watch. Just the concept of like the Avengers all being murked one yeah. by one and how easy it was for them to get that murked. time. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Like. Just to think. Yeah, I love I, I loved this one. And then Me all too. of the voice actors reprising their roles was awesome. Uh I, I really enjoyed it. I'll just say it. I really enjoyed it. But I couldn't yeah. figure out and I never did any research about it. Was that Sam Jackson playing Nick Fury? Ah uh, yes, I think so. Go. Because yes. his voice sounded slightly not Sam Jackson, See, but at I the same it. time, I was like they got everybody else. I don't, yeah, I don't know who else Jackson. it would be. Yeah, yeah. I'll have to yeah, do some research. It didn't, it didn't sound like Scarlett Johansson at all, though. I don't think it was Scarlett That's Johansson. What I thought. Yeah. Especially if they're in. Oh, I guess they probably recorded this before, but they're not. They're not playing nice with each other. Um, yeah. It is saying Sam Jackson. Here. Okay. Okay. Uh, it wasn't, Lake it wasn't Bell as Natasha Romanov. I don't yeah. know who Lake Bell is. I mean, Drake. But I mean, Lake. Bell, <laughs> Drake Bell. Yeah. <laughs> That's the first thing I thought. I was like Drake Bell. Oh, like yep, yep. according to a uh, according to an IGN poll, the most popular episode of What If so far is episode two. Really? I can see it. it's giving people more uh, more Yondu. I feel like Yondu and uh, oh, yeah. Nice Thanos is a is a wombo combo. That's hard <laughs> nice. to beat. Wombo combo. <laughs> nice Thanos. <laughs> Um, what do you think, Matt? I liked that. Yeah, I thought it was good for the the same reasons. I thought it was, um, pr- like not really probably that far off from kind of like the main universe that like we knew in terms of not really much had to go differently, um, for that to happen. And I think that it was a unique, um, angle to take from it and. You know, it reminded me of that. Um, I can't remember what the name of the story is, but there's like that just or there's just like the Justice League common thread that like Batman knows exactly how to kill like every one of them. Mm, I know um, what you're talking about. Yeah. And it gave me that sort of uh, same vibe, which that's always a plus. I thought um, I the only thought thing that was a little bit interesting. I mean, I guess he had something to gain personally from it, but it's like. Loki's really going to be, uh, you know, that uh, upset about Thor getting killed. That's when he liked Thor the least, I think, in the whole uh, arc that we've known him. Yeah, yeah, I thought the same thing. I was like, why is Loki so upset that Thor got murked? Yeah. Honor. Oh, also, I didn't know it was that easy for Thor to get murked. So that, yeah, shit. Oh, that's because he wasn't. He, he didn't yeah. have his. Yeah. He'd been stripped of his powers at mm-hmm. that point. He was not that's Thor. That's true. He was, he was, Chris he was just Macho Man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Gotcha. Macho gotcha. Man. I thought it was I, really uh, fun. Me too. I felt like, yeah, I just hadn't seen the older movies in a while. So I just feel like that there was lines that they like directly took from there that like tickled me just as much this time because they, they felt to be brand new. Um, even if they were like homages back to the Thor one and, you know, incredible, incredible Hulk and uh, Iron yeah. Man 2. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, they were, um, they were cool. It was really kind of cool to go back to that MCU time. Like yeah. the very beginning. Nobody I thought that knew. was a lot of fun. Also, I'd forgotten that all those movies took place in like the same week. That was kind of uh, bonkers. I didn't week know. I didn't even know that until watching this. Mm-hmm. And then listening to another podcast this morning, I was like, oh, my God. Uh, they all take place the same week. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Enjoyable. Yeah. Yeah. Very much better. And the, the sort of ending as well with full spoilers ahead, whatever. Loki being head of Earth and then Nick Fury <laughs> getting uh, Captain Marvel back to fight him. I always like how they kind of say it's like, all right, and this is what the rest of the, this is like, how, this would, you know, what the next movie like in this universe would be. They always kind of do that like at the end, like how they did it with um, Ego and. Um, yeah peter quail at the yeah. end of the last one so i was sure like, that's a nice little touch that's a nice touch I yeah freaking, that is freaking colson was hilarious yeah he's classic <laughs> he was cool seeing colson back yeah so <laughs> overall <laughs> good <Yes>. thoughts <laughs> very overall like good it. thoughts on uh what if episode three yeah i'm looking forward to the next one now big time yeah. now i'm actually i'm kind of watching for it now yeah, after the last week, more, more tied in. Least. Yeah, absolutely. Look to be uh, Doctor Strange focused from the the Twitterverse. Yes. yes. Oh, that's gonna I, be. A I mind saw a poster F. on Instagram today. It's gonna so. be a mind f. I can't wait. So. <laughs> uh, just like we said last week when we recorded, uh, I guarantee uh, tonight was going to be the night that the trailer dropped for Spider-Man No Way Home. And sure enough, um, I'm sitting there shooting the shit with Catherine and t- I get a text from Tanner that says, holy shit. And I immediately knew what that <laughs> meant. Uh, so yeah. I immediately raced to YouTube and watched the trailer three or four times um, before finally coming to terms with it. So I, still I know this, this discussion could be very well be all over the place so this morning when i was listening to another podcast break it down i took notes and kind of formed one two three four five six seven questions that i think we should all give our takes on instead of just widespread uh around yes i could go all day maybe we could talk about it like we talk about how we do our top fives i'll start by answering the question i'll ask matt and then i'll ask tanner Sure. Just to keep the conversation more organized and less cluttered. I like that. Good idea. Very good idea. Okay. So, number one, Matt, uh, a theory slash concept that a lot of people are toying around with right now is that Doctor Strange is not who he say he is in uh, in this movie, uh, mainly because them thinking... Why would Doctor Strange willingly do this for Peter? Why would he mess up a spell as as yeah. master sorcery as he is? Um, a lot of people think that Marvel shot that scene out of deep fake to uh, fake hmm. us out because apparently in the comics, Peter goes to Mephisto, Mephisto to make one, a deal. One day more storyline or yeah. whatever it's called. Correct. Yeah. So Matt, do you think and 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 also the fact that the the uh, the sanctum santorium or whatever is it's like all iced over is iced yeah. over. Do you think something's going down with Dr. Strange? I think that's more likely than sort of making the leap of logic that, you know, as he's a smart kid, Peter, I'm not trying to not do that, but like that he's able to trick and prey on sort of like the pride of Dr. Strange. It's like, well, I'm sure like someone else like can do this or whatever. It's like, that's not like, Mm-mm. I, I saw that as sort of the most likely thing if the events were to be taken at face value, but I like that better because especially later in the trailer when they're like on the train, it looks like he's actually fighting this Doctor Strange who actually might be someone else. 
Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I think that there, I'm not all in on that theory, but I'm like, you know, two thirds in, I would say. Okay. I, uh, am curious what you think, Tanner. I think, um, I don't see what I think is he is him, but I mean, I, I, that's not, that's not answering the question, but it's, uh, I don't know. I, I don't know if they're going to introduce a Mephisto right away right now. That's a huge multiversal threat. That'll be that. That's, I feel like that could be, he's potential for being the next big bad. So I don't know if they're going to introduce that right away, but I think, I think it is Dr. Strange. So I don't know if I'm all in on that theory. I just think he's doing this for a reason. I won't keep going. Cause I'm sure that's your next a, a question, but. Um, well, um, I oh, was just going to add on. I, I think that there could be something up with Dr. Strange. However, I think he knows with more a, with a movie that is supposed to potentially introduce daredevil and the sinister six and the other two Spider-Mans and potentially this yeah. and potentially that. Do you think they're going to try to add on another major character? Because another popular theory is that the second half of the movie, Dr. Strange won't be present because he has to go off and confront other multiversal, multiversal threats, which means madness. Wanda and Mephisto. And, the, and, and this is why we figure out that, you know, whatever. Um, so I'm not sure. I, I I would be okay with Doctor Strange being something different, but at the same time, it's a loaded movie already. I don't yeah. know how much time they have they possibly have. Yeah. So Matt, I'm gonna go ahead and ask you the uh, the second question. Who do you think at this point in time is the creator of the multiverse? Is it Loki? Is it Doctor Strange? Is it Wanda? Or is it a combination of all three of those events? blowing the multiverse up i think loki at this point i think wanda created kind of just like her own little pocket in the main storyline you know depending on how the events take place i think dr strange creates a gateway between them from this and um and then yeah in the events of the season finale of of loki i think that that's where the multiverse begins and yeah, so that's that's what I'm thinking. I agree. Okay, Tanner, you think, think the same thing? Hundred percent, Loki. I hadn't I hadn't even thought about it like that. How Wanda created a pocket. Yeah, she's doing it for her own reason. Loki created the multiverse, and Doctor Strange's events in Spider Man are going to be able to bridge <laughs> different universes together. That's pretty. That's pretty good. Yeah. Um. Next I'm all up, in on that one. <laughs> next up, Matt. <laughs> Uh, do you think at the beginning shot of the trailer or beginning couple shots of the trailer, we see Peter being interrogated by a couple people in a police room. There's a man in white shirt. Yeah. Uh, is that daredevil? I, I think it's Matt Murdoch. Sh- sure. Yeah. <laughs> is it, is that Charlie Cox? I, I think it would, it'd be very cool if it is, but I could also see that as a fake out. Yeah. Because I've, they know exactly this is happening. People sure. are talking about it. Sure. So more more than likely, yes. Um, but again, not 100%. Maybe like close to like 55% on this one. Okay. Tanner? Charlie Cox has very, this is weird, but he has very distinctly hairy ass arms. Dude, I and thought that the same thing. that guy has hairy ass arms. I thought arms. the same and, thing. And every lawyer type of thing, when they're working late in the office, his sleeves are rolled up. In that uh, same he, way, that's though, what he does I with don't the know, French the cufflinks or with the the cufflinks that he's got. Oh God, I didn't look that. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> no, Come on, call yourself a theorist. <laughs> I know, but however, no, it's I, but the chunkiness. He looks chunky, but I think that's just the shirt. I think it's a, just a white shirt. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's him the or biggest, a prosecutor. The biggest combat to that theory is where's his cane. Under the table just, on the other side of his chair. It's they could kinda... just be editing it out also to 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 fake us out. Yeah. But I, I think I, I personally think that that's Matt Murdock. If he was yeah. if he was nothing, if he was no character of any importance, they would have shown his face. You're right. Well, yeah, no, you're right. Um, yeah. But uh, another popular rumor that I saw today is that so timeline wise, at least for release, Hawkeye is supposed to start, I think, like November 12th or something like that. 
And apparently one of the villains in the Hawkeye series is going to be Kingpin. Oh, okay. Played by Vincent D'Onofrio, possibly. So if they introduce him in like November and Hawkeye, then Daredevil being in Spider-Man would just like, Makes yeah, sense. would kind of make sense. So uh, that's, that's a popular theory out there. So cool. Good. Cool. 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 I like that. Did you guys notice next question, Matt, uh, that there, uh, I don't know how deep in Spider-Man lore you are. If you didn't catch this, then I think Tanner might have. There's a certain scene in the trailer where Peter is running in like a like a donation kind yes. of city hall looking place called Feast. Do you do you have any in- implication on what that means? That's uh, the place you volunteer at in the places Four game, right? Yep, correct. It's where May works usually. It's where Aunt May works, also where Miles Morales uh, right, works okay. as well. And he's okay. confirmed. He's already in this. We already know he's in the MCU. Remember? Yes, because yep. in the Spider-Man Homecoming, we see uh, Donald Glover play his uncle, aka yep. the Prowler. Rumor is, I don't know the kid's name. Forgive me, but the uh, the black kid from uh, Stranger Things is rumored the- to be. Is rumored to play uh, Miles Morales. It always comes back to those damn Stranger Things kids. <laughs> I know. There's there were uh, there were set photos taking a picture of him, not in any costume or anything, but he was on set of uh, the movie. Oh my uh, god! So do you think again with going to my Mephisto comment earlier? Uh, do you think they introduce Miles Morales, or do you think they throw him in a quick cameo and we move on? Probably that. That's what I would think. I th- I have a I think that they well I mean if they're gonna bring in all these other Spider Men yes we're gonna get Miles Morales but and I don't but I don't know not in suit not yet he's not ready I don't know if he's I even it, bit yet I think it would be a really really fun buddy team up movie if Tom Holland had to train Miles Morales yeah like, oh, to be the next Spider Man I think that'd be such a fun like buddy cop movie <laughs> Turner um, and Hooch yeah. I think yeah. that'd be really fun. So, um, so we're kind of iffy on Miles Morales right now. I think I think Matt's right. I think we get a cameo. I think we get the whole feast interaction thing, but I don't think we get anything more. I think there's like a bump in, like, "Hey, I'm Miles." Yeah, yeah. The, na- the name That's Miles is too. at least said. Yeah, yeah. At least drop the name Miles or Morales, and I think that's all we need. Yeah, he gets and he gets he get um, in the PlayStation Four game. That's where he gets bit. Maybe we watch him get bit, and that's how they get movie. That's just where we. I, I bet you five bucks we see him get bit, and that's where they leave us for the rest right, of the movie. We don't see him. Bucks. I'm saving. I'm saving the juicier questions for the end. I'm not of course, because this trailer had a lot of uh, shit in the second half of it. Start with, start with Tanner on the next one. I, I don't want to take the. We can, we can spread them out, switch back and forth. Well, no, well, this one is the last one that's less juicy oh, before cool. we get to the juicy one. So Matt, um, yeah, I'm honored. Obviously, the one of the major plot lines of this movie is the fact that spider-man's identity was revealed yeah how much of the movie do you think deals with that crisis and then the second half of the movie d- uh, deals with the multiverse or do you think or are you worried that they kind of let the multiverse take over the movie versus like like the last movie ended on such a cliffhanger of like spider-man's right. identity is peter parker <laughs> yeah i think they'll definitely have to i mean just looking at kind of like the big parts of it um just sort of logically like from a screenwriting point you have to make it seem like peter's only option to get any sense of a normal life back is to go to dr strange to cast well you know dr strange or quote unquote dr strange to fix it so i think it's definitely going to be at least a half hour of the movie of him trying to do normal stuff and not be able to because you know everyone at school is taking pictures of him or whatever and he's in getting interrogated and his friends are getting interrogated and so yeah. i feel like that it's gonna be at least a half hour of the movie um that's really going before we um before dr strange is even introduced that's kind of my breakdown and then after that it's just you know it's just a romp through the, the greatest hits of the last uh, <laughs> the last few decades Spider-Man movies. Yeah. Yeah. I feel you. I think, I think you're right. I think the first like 25, 30 minutes deals with it, but then it goes straight into the multiverse and then everything else explodes. Yeah. 
I think Tanner. Uh, well, I think I mean it's going to be in the background the whole time, but uh, but like but like yeah, I agree. They're going to mostly focus on this big blow up of the multiverse and about all the things that we're probably going to talk to talk about here in a, the next couple of questions. It's going to be the focus on mostly because I'm going to be pretty pissed off if they do not focus on these things that we saw in the trailer. I'll leave it at that. Those things being the villains, Tanner. Yes, I, I don't want to. Yeah, I know you're about to ask some. Um, can I tell you uh, before I ask any questions how joyous I was when I saw Alfred Molina? Oh. Um, just, just so, so amazing. Because um, I, I, I honestly expected us to not see any villains in this trailer at all. No, just like, hints, like I, nothing, nothing but like the sand and the pumpkin bombs. Like that's maybe the yeah. laugh, you know? Yeah. So, <sighs> Tanner, I'll start with you. Uh, who will do you think all six members of the Sinister Six will be there? Sandman, Electro, uh, we already know those. Uh, Doc Ock, Green Goblin, Lizard is in the trailer. Lizard, and we, I think, for the sixth one, I would love it. I want it to be kingpin somehow but i don't think that's going to happen i think it'll most likely be vulture because he's already in the universe he's been established or scorpion he's also been established what about rhino his... from uh amazing spider-man uh he wasn't even Ooh. the rhino that we're supposed to that's not even the right rhino I don't, he I... is a rhino though i know he is just, a i don't want to see that i don't want to see him again he was you don't want to see paul shit. giamatti no i mean him but not his not his rhino it sucked <laughs> a suit <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> he's supposed to be attached to it for life you yeah. know according but to I, comics i think mm-hmm. hey so think. is the vulture and so is the scorpion but those Wait, are just suits i know but the, but the rhino is always you know what i mean yeah i know what you mean. <laughs> the, <laughs> yeah. the rhino is much cooler if it's a dude that's literally a rhino i think the thing about yeah. rhino is that it's a dude <laughs> that's a rhino he's supposed to, yeah it's so a Tanner, mechanized so Tanner, you think the sixth member is uh, Vulture? Yes, for sure. I want it to be Kingpin, but I doubt it. There's just no way. Or if Pro- honestly, Prowler would be dope to put in there too, but he's not big enough to. He's just a little petty criminal, so he's At not. At this point, yeah, yeah, he's not big enough for this. But that'd right. be cool. Maybe we could see. We might even see a appearance from um, Donald Glover's Prowler. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah, Matt. I'm excited. What do you what do you think, uh, Sinister Six? I bet we see all six, but I doubt that we see a scene of them sitting all together in a boardroom or whatever, saying we shall call ourselves the Sinister Six or whatever. <laughs> because I, I feel like that that's something that at least the MCU does a lot. Like it has a lot more faith in the audience to sort of find that, like find oh, out yeah. that stuff like themselves. Um, so that's that's kind of where I see that going. Yeah, I agree. You um who do you think number six? Where Maybe. are your hype levels when you see the Doc Ock arm appearing or the pumpkin bomb dropping? Uh, I like pumpkin bomb more. I think that this I yeah. I I was more excited for Doc Ock, but I didn't think we'd see anything regarding the Green Goblin. Yeah. So when the pumpkin bomb did fly out, I was like, holy fuck. Oh, like, oh yeah. And he goes, ah, 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 ah. oh, God. Okay. I'm um, shitting again. I, um, <laughs> okay. And then finally, Matt, I'll ask you this one first. Do you think there's uh, any possibility that the sinister six makes it out of this movie that they go through for another movie or two or do you think for the most part like this movie is going to be a internal one movie conflict uh with the with the quote-unquote sinister six if we've learned one thing from marvel and especially when we're still going to be pretty early in the phase I don't think they're going to be shutting the door completely on anything at this point. 
Cause I yeah, mean, I, uh, yeah, like with WandaVision, they have Agatha still just like chilling out there, basically in a prison of her own mind, which is really fucked up, <laughs> but it is what it is. Um, so yeah, I think, and um, yeah, so I think that there, one or two of them might fall, but like we've talked about, it seems like there's like eight or nine, like sort of total believable component pieces that could be like swapped in. So I don't think I so. I think Goblin and Ock, I think everybody from the different universes with the, with like Jamie Foxx's Electra, I think they're all, I mean, they're not going to like, I don't think they're going to kill him. But honestly, I think Willie, um, if it's William Defoe, that hasn't even been confirmed yet, right? Has it? I think it's not been officially confirmed, but I mean, but if it isn't, I, I'm going to kill. My, I'm going to be. So I, I saw a picture on Twitter so, that leaked his that, face of his face. Yeah. Um, <sighs> but I mean, and he was spotted on the set a few yeah, times true. too. I, I, I think, I think it's going to be him. I mean, if, if we're getting Alfred Molina and we're getting Jamie Fox, we got, to. uh, then I think we're going to get, uh, I think we're going to get him no, but now but what, oh. here. Well, uh, something I'm wondering also uh, that that was the end of my questions. Now I'm just wondering other things. Um, we can go on for a little while longer. We won't, we won't butcher this thing. Um, do we see Thomas Hayden church as yeah. Sandman? Yeah. Do we see him or do we see him just in CGI form? Because that's the thought with the lizard as well. Like we're not going to see oh, the actor that played yeah. lizard. We're just going to see the CGI lizard. Yeah, because I mean, whenever he changed back to Kurt Connors, he was just you know gross and mean. And <laughs> yeah, I think we'll we'll keep. Uh, well, you know what? That's a great point. We'll just see lizard, and I think we might just see Sandman too. Because I but mean, what's the point? Of, yeah, yeah. See them as like people at all. Yeah, I, mean, I think yeah. Thomas Hayden Church is the one that's most likely the one yeah. that we see as a person, just yeah. because he is a person, whereas the <laughs> lizard is a lizard. Yeah, and it's pretty hard for him to change from lizard to person, and you know, it's not yeah. as easy as Sandman. He's made of sand. <laughs> Here's the thing my... about him: he's a man that's made of sand. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing. Here's here's a here's a good one. At what point do these guys get pulled out of their universes? Right when they're evilest, because Doc Ock, how are they gonna? Exp- Doc Ock died a hero, or not a hero died not evil anymore. He yeah, he, like he sacrificed himself. Yeah, to to not destroy New York City and something pop somebody that some something that I saw someone point out is it's small, but if you remember from Spider Man Two. Um, the tentacles' eyes are red when they're in control of Doc's mind, uh, and in the trailer, they they're red. Good. Then so that, that means, means that be. he's taken out of the universe at a point where he's still angry at Peter Parker. Okay. Uh, what if it's right in the middle of their train scene, and or something like that? Like, what if it's right in the middle of the fight? Yeah, like, the oh train or the bank. Yeah, it's gonna be something like that. Yeah. Oh, the bank. Yeah, that too. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Here's here's something, Tanner. I know you've been clamoring at the bit to talk about this. Hmm. Uh, when, at the very end, when Doc Ock says, "Hello, Peter." Okay, uh, let me go off. What are the minute. odds that he's talking to Tom Holland there? Odds uh, about fifty percent. I think what is what we're seeing. You see the suit Tom Holland's wearing. Yep. It's the same suit Peter wears, and the other one. God, I'm getting confused right now. The Tobey Maguire one. I think that. He, I think that Marvel's playing with us as they always are, and that's really Tobey Maguire standing on that bridge. Or it's a completely different like scene, obviously, but it's Toby who he's talking to. Because how the hell he does he? I mean, unless they already met up and we're like, okay, this is the Peter we need to kill. So let's go pull this, let's go kill this Peter. And and uh, I don't think that's the case. I just think he's looking at Tobey Maguire. <sighs> And he yeah, says, hello, the- Peter. So he's in suit. That means he's not wearing his suit. He's wearing that little, I don't know. I could go either way. I've heard theories that, um, like, the the the, um, the certain villains from their universes are only seeing, they see our Peter Parker as their Peter Parker. That's what I've heard. Uh, Another theory. But I don't like that at all. I want to see all three of them. It does. That's the problem. 
I want to see them swing at the same time. I'm going to be really upset if they're not. What do you say? It sounds cost efficient. Cost it efficient. Is. Yeah. It is. They don't have to have them on screen at the same time. He, <laughs> here's here, another one I heard was that, um, that they took or that Peter, once the multiverse gets expanded, he's almost living the two different Spider Man's lives because like, of uh, Doctor Strange's life. Line. Yeah. Yeah. So like he is wearing the same suit that Peter wears in Spider-Man three because like he gets. Re- <laughs> yeah. I was doing the dance. For yeah. All yeah. Those yeah. See Tom Holland do that douchebag dance. Yes. Can we see Tom <laughs> Holland do that dance? <laughs> He'd um, probably be good at it. So after this trailer, I know kind of, I know we can still talk for hours about this, oh, yeah. but we, we, we don't need to do that. We'll, once more trailers come out over time and more news comes out over time, we'll speculate more. But last question, as of right now, with the footage we've seen, Matt, out of on a scale from 1 to 10, what are the chances that we do see Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield? Um, eight. Okay. I give it eight spider legs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Tanner, do you w- w- realistically thinking? I think they're shooting themselves in the foot if they don't try at least try. It's not the to question. It's not the question. Mean? It's not the question, Tanner. Oh, do well, you then, think we see it? Yes, I think we see it. About uh, I'll give it a ninety percent chance we see it. I hope okay. to God I'm. I hope I'm wrong, and I hope it's a hundred. <laughs> So eight I, spider legs and a scorpion tail <laughs> for those playing along at home. Yeah, I think I think we're right here. I think I think we will see them whether they're in the movie for fifteen minutes or for an hour and fifteen minutes. I think we'll see, but um, I think it's probably going to be like uh, I I'm at least thinking in my head like Sinister Six is pounding the the f out of Tom Holland, and uh, there's going to be an uh, end game like reveal on your left. On your left situation where Toby and Andrew swing in. I, I hope it's like sense. that, but you know, hey, we're a few months out. That's yeah. it. We're going to see. And they haven't confirmed anything with those two. No leaks, no nothing. I, I don't think they will. Do you guys think we see them in a trailer? Wait. No, hell no. It's all going to be a complete surprise, I think. We might hear a, a, like them each do a line or something. Mm-hmm. I, I think oh, I, yeah. I can see. I could see something like a portal open and we're almost at their POV and yeah. we almost like see them crawl through the portal. Like we see a shadow or something, but, but that's it. I, I yeah. don't think, I don't think we see them themselves in the trailer. No. Yeah. Maybe they, uh, they split the line, like with great power comes great responsibility, like over a trailer or something. I don't know. Oh, that would be, Awesome. That's, the, that's a bit too far. It's not. Ha- that's not happening. You never know. <laughs> I also. I also. Um. Shit. I lost it. What was it? I heard I that. Oh yeah. I also heard that uh, there was somebody that got interviewed on the. <laughs> oh yeah. I <laughs> and saw they that. said they tricked him. They said, "Who who does Tom Holland work better with, Andrew Garfield or Tobey Maguire?" And he goes, "Oh, Andrew Garfield." Yeah. It was the. Uh, it was the math teacher from. Uh, yeah. far from home. The guy that was he always cons- the the guy that was always freaking out over all the shenanigans. He was being interviewed, and he was just like, "Yeah, which Spider Man's the Tom Holland best with?" And he says, "Oh, Andrew Garfield, no doubt." And the reporter goes, "Really?" And he immediately catches himself, and he's like, "Ah, uh, you know that that's you know he he tries to what backpedal. I think, yeah, he he tries to backpedal, but you know, I, I think we see him. I, oh yeah, I, I don't think it's a coincidence. I mean, we're using their villains." Right, I I think it's totally gonna happen. So, Spider Man yeah. No Way Home. That's the first trailer reaction. We're all pretty pumped still, and uh, we'll 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 see over the next couple months. To be honest, I'm really honestly just hyped to go see Shang Chi in a few Me days too. and see this trailer. Hopefully, played before it in the theater. Oh. Yeah, the uh, trailer breakdown I was sort of looking at of all of this, the headline they have for uh, Wong was Wong exits early to go film Shang-Chi. <laughs> <laughs> to go fight Abomination in a cage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah for real. <laughs> I'm excited for Shang-Chi. 
Shang Chi. Yeah, I've heard Shang Chi. Okay, we'll I kept find saying out. Shang. I'm I'm excited to see what we get here. Oh yeah, I think I've heard good things. Badass. I've heard good things, so we'll see. We shall see. Hell yeah, the Marvel hype is back. Yep, the Marvel hype I'm is back. fully in. Oh, I'm fully in as well. <laughs> Everybody, that was Binge Boys 227, a truly content-heavy week. Um, but next week is no exception, like we just stated. What if episode four, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, certified lover boy, um, and then possibly, you know, maybe we'll throw in a top ten list or a top five list in there as well. Probably so, a trailer from uh, Shang-Chi. Like what? before, they're probably oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. with something. Yeah, yeah. What, what if we get like a show trailer? Is that is that a, no? That's not a thing in the movies, right? Dude, no one's doing it. Hey, no one's doing it. But I also just realized, what kind of after credit scene are we gonna get? Oh Shang- shit! This is, this is the first movie we're seeing that's like gonna push the timeline forward. Yeah. <laughs> so what kind of are we gonna see? What's her name again? Uh oh, uh, JLD. Yeah, Louis Louis Dreyfus. Do we Louis Dreyfus oh, again? Yeah. Oh, our yeah. character's name. She's gonna be uh, the new Thanos, just popping up in every after credit scene. She's gonna go fine. I'll do it myself. <laughs> <laughs> fine. Let me get Jerry. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Let me, do, let me do it myself. <laughs> what's, the, what's the deal with the Marvel movies? <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> All right, everybody. That's Binge Boys Two Twenty Seven. Check us out on the YouTubes. Check us out on the Instagram. Rate and review on iTunes. And tell a friend in need. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. See you.